Dashboards are one of the most powerful tools that you can build in Flowfuse, but they're only as good as they are utilized, and bad design can kill your dashboard before it even gets off the ground. Hey there, my name is Christopher Sandoval. I'm a developer relations advocate here at Flowfuse, and today I'm going to give you five dashboard best practices that'll turn your dashboard into an information powerhouse. Let's get into it. Make it useful, not exhaustive. It can be tempting to just show everything. Do you have data from 40 sensors? Great, throw it at the board. You have to remember that dashboards aren't just about showing everything. They're about helping your viewer actually understand what it is that they're seeing. So focus down on what actually matters. If you're building a production dashboard, then maybe you only need throughput or uptime. If you're calculating OEE, do you really need to headline with every minor temperature variance? Now you can save all the granularity for your drill down, and we'll get into that in a minute, but your dashboard shouldn't feel like a Where's Waldo puzzle. And if it does, you're not helping anyone. You're just creating friction. Group logically. When you look at your dashboard, it should make visual sense. The whole idea here is to help people get an understanding of what's happening as fast as possible. So reducing how much they have to parse or how much they have to go searching is going to be huge. Now to make this work, you need to group items together logically. You could be pretty general, like grouping all of your temperature sensors together in one place. But you can also be a little bit more specific. For instance, grouping things by work unit. Maybe you have all the items of one section of your production line, and then below that you show the next section of your production line, and so on and so on, until you're representing the entire flow. Regardless of how you do it, you want to make sure that you're grouping things as logically as possible. So group items together in the way that makes sense for the average user. This will unlock two huge benefits for you. Firstly, it'll help your viewer find what they need to find quickly, and second, it will visually reinforce the context of what they're actually seeing. Simply put, if your dashboard feels like a spreadsheet and not a map, you're doing it wrong. Match information types. The way that you visualize something is just as important as what you choose to visualize. For instance, if you're showing a temperature trend, use a line graph. If you're showing storage capacity, then you can use a gauge or a battery style indicator. If you're showing machine status, you probably only really need to show text. Is it working or is it not? You see, the human brain is visual, and you really want people to see meaning, not something that they have to decode. So when in doubt, ask yourself this simple question. If I didn't build this, would I understand what it means? Flowfuse's dashboard nodes make this incredibly easy. If you use the right widget for the right metric, your dashboard immediately becomes more intuitive. Now, as part of this, you're going to have to put yourself in other people's shoes. You need to check your bias at the door and figure out if what you're building is actually what people are looking for. And most importantly, that it's in the format that they are expecting. If your dashboard doesn't make sense to anybody but you, you've lost the plot. Create a storytelling flow. Every good dashboard tells a story. And that might seem weird since a lot of dashboards are just numbers and data. But when someone opens a dashboard, they're usually trying to answer a question. For instance, what's the current state of our production line? What's the overall site and system health? Is there anything critical that needs to be surfaced and worked on? So when you create a dashboard, you need to create it to answer that question. And the best way to do that is to tell the story of whatever you're tracking. First, you can give the big story beats. What does everything currently look like? Are we running into any huge blockers? Does everything generally look the way that it should? And then you can give the supporting details. Are there any machines that need attention right now? Are we seeing any drops in efficiency? Any surges in power consumption? And after those questions are answered, you can get very, very granular. And now is the time that you can show specific sensor data and subsystem metrics, and you can get really, really specific in the way that you wanted to when you just wanted to throw everything at the wall. What this does is give people a natural way to explore the data. You can move top down, you can move left to right, but it's the core way that humans experience documented information. We want the headline, and then the details, and then the deep dive. And that's how you're going to make your dashboard a decision-making tool, and not just a wall of metrics or numbers. In design, less is more. Finally, and this is a point that people fail at quite commonly, keep it clean. You don't need blinking lights or loud colors or wild fonts. You want contrast, not chaos. Stick to a neutral background, readable fonts. Only use color when it means something. Red can be bad, green can be good. And that might sound overly simplistic, but you have to remember here that you're not creating something flashy to impress people. You're creating something to convey information. 
Best way to think about your dashboard is to imagine it like an archaeological dig site for the future. If someone lands on this dashboard 50 years from now, are they going to understand what you were documenting? Are they going to be able to parse out what's the important part and what's just noise? Because if people aren't going to be able to do that in the future, then they definitely won't be able to do it now. And honestly, that can have a huge impact not just on the functionality of your dashboard, but on the morale of the people who are using it. If using your dashboard is frustrating and loud and overstimulating, then how do you think the people using it are going to feel? If your dashboard is calm, your team will be too. At the end of the day, a good FlowFuse dashboard doesn't just show data. It tells a story. It helps communicate context. It sets something that your team can actually act upon. So remember, make it useful, not exhaustive. Group logically, match information types, create a storytelling flow, and keep your design simple and intentional. If you follow these five best practices for dashboard creation, then your dashboards will go from okay to indispensable. If you like this video, please give us a like, comment, or subscribe. And if you want to find out how to make your very own dashboard, then I recommend you take a look at the video linked in the description below. And if you're not already on Flowfuse, you can head to flowfuse.com to get a free 14-day trial. This has been Christopher Sandoval. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.